著名的特斯拉分析师丹·艾弗斯再次接受采访，谈到了特斯拉和 Waymo、Uber 这样的企业，它的竞争关系，为什么特斯拉最终会胜出？ Start to be in big cities,、mm. but that Tesla has chosen a route of just cameras, and that he doesn't think that they, at least at this point, have the ability to do autonomous driving、mm. in big cities. And so my, my, I didn't ask him on on the show, but I, I, when I thought about it, I thought that's the kind of like a real weakness because the money is going to be in, in big cities. So where where, let's talk about Tesla to be, to begin with. I find it amazing. That peak earnings of Tesla were 2022,、mm-hmm. and where the earnings are going to be this year is like 60 percent lower than they were in 2022.、Mm-hmm. It's a testimony to the belief in Elon Musk that the stock is actually flat over that period, but certainly doesn't look great. Give us your thoughts on Tesla. You know where are they in autonomous driving? What has to happen to this company to make it better? They're losing market share to to, to China. Let's talk Tesla for a while. Yeah, and look, and I think like for us, like I mean, most people know us for like Apple in the early days, and really Tesla in the early, right in terms of identifying that because it's my belief that Tesla is the most, along with Nvidia, disruptive technology company in the world, like in the future. Because look, the reality is like when you look at the future for them is about autonomous and robotics. So when it comes to like losing share, deliveries, numbers coming down, and it's a huge frustration of the bears, right? In terms of Tesla, is that the whole future for Tesla, the whole growth, it's all about physical AI, autonomous, and Optimus, you know, on, on the robotic side. When it comes to autonomous, see, my view is way more two hundred that two hundred two hundred thirty thousand dollar cars. They're essentially in five cities in the United States. That's how much the cars cost because、yeah. the, the incredible technology that they have all over the car. Yeah. So, so they, how, how much does that car cost? Two to two hundred thirty thousand. Wow. So, so now look, will that come down over time? Yeah, they're not scaling. Like no, I'm saying the real Waymo's are cool. It's cool to tell your friend, dude. I was in Scottsdale. I was in a Waymo. It's really that's great. Like take a Facebook picture. But the reality is like, who's going to own autonomous? It's going to be Tesla's world. Everyone else paying rent, relative to the scale producing these cars, thirty thousand dollars. They're going to have millions of autonomous vehicles. But how do they get over the fact that it that, that doesn't seem nearly that as they, they, or they don't use light? I mean, it's cheaper,、yeah. but it's cheaper for a reason. But I believe Tesla. Be, it's a whole different data model because you have ten million Teslas out there. Their model is non lidar, so it's camera driven. Right. As someone like myself, I spent a lot of time like in Austin in the robo taxis. Those and, the, and obviously that's going to continue to get deployed around the United States. I believe they're going to be able to do it non lidar. And I was like, I believe they're going to be doing. How do you cam- do it non lidar? Camera set. If you look at how Tesla's done it, look, go back years ago. They're like, you can't build an EV like that. You can't actually build. You know, a car that's actually going to fight. You can't build a supercharger network. Musk and Tesla, their whole, their whole existence has always been. You can't. That can't. Same thing, because I believe it's going to be a data centric model. The way that they ultimately build this out. What do you mean a data centric model? Because it's all based on the AI from the data, from the technology that's been built into the algorithm. It's not just camera technology. It's the、so、using its camera plus AI software. It's from AI software, and that's why ultimately what's going to happen is like they're going to actually own a big piece of XAI, which I think will happen in November. What's XAI? XAI is Musk's AI technology company. Okay. Okay. So I just view the future that Tesla is going to continue to innovate more and more in autonomous. The interventions, which basically is a fancy term for saying a human has to get involved in terms of、uh, you know、um, getting on the wheel or、uh, taking control, are going to I think get to the point that you're going to have more and more regulatory approval for what I view as true level four, and you know ultimately no wheel essentially well, technology. Level four means no driver. No driver. Right. So look, is that coming today? No. Is it coming tomorrow? But I believe like. In the next few years, that is within reach. Well, so what has to ha- what has to happen in terms of、uh, technology for Tesla to get to that 
point because until then this is not going to be rolled out sure. all over the place you need to have in terms of full self-driving yes. different, you have to get to a point that the the technology is so good that it hits a regulatory threshold that then from a federal perspective and ultimately the state they say that's good that's good how far away do you think we are i from believe that? we're two years away two years away i think we're two years away from starting to get some sort of federal approval on what I view as true FSD for Tesla. Now, full self-driving. Full self-driving. Now, like, look, they the scale obviously has to get there. Okay, you got to get robo taxis to ultimately 35, 40 cities around the United States. You know, there's a you, that's something that's going to need to happen. Waymo, look, because it's our view. Like, we're much more neutral. We were bullish on Uber. We're much more neutral and negative on Uber, because it's my view over the years that Tesla will ultimately dominate that opportunity. The economics on ride sharing are going to come down significantly. That's going to be major pricing pressure for Uber Lyft, because the way it's ultimately going to work is if I have an Uber and I live in New Jersey and I'm here right now in New York City, when I put my Uber into the network my uber right now my tesla could be driving around new jersey picking people up mm-hmm. making money because 94 percent of the time you don't use your car and then i make sure it's back in my driveway by 6 p.m it's made 500 hours driving people around so people have a little side business of course it's, it's no different like it's that's like, that's what you think is what it's Tesla's like me and you do. buying a medallion so is that an uber business or is that a tesla that's business? a tesla that's business. a tesla business so that's why and, and it looked, that'd be like me and you buying a medallion for a taxi sir. And right. like we're so it's the same concept. And that's where like my view is termed like physical AI. And that's when you look at everything Jensen talks about, physical AI. Autonomous. What is physical? Physical AI, AI means physical physical devices, physical that action machine that use AI. That's robotics, mm-hmm. humanoids, I understand. Autonomous. So if we're two years away. Well, let's say you're right. Let's say two years from now, it's clear that Tesla level four. is, the, is yeah. level four. In our world, two years is a freaking eternity. So what happens to Tesla between now? And forget about robo-taxi. Sure. Let's talk about the fundamentals mm-hmm. now. What happens to Tesla in the next couple of years? Because the tax credits are going away sure. to buy EVs. Are the earnings going to go down another 50%? I don't think they're going down another 50 I mean, I think you have some stabilization from margins. Some of the demand destruction started to stabilize, you know, in Europe. You have new models that come out, I think, probably over the next year. But the reality is, like, look, it's the most emo- – I've covered whatever, 100 public companies. Like, the most emotional bull bear debate out there will always be Tesla. The bears would be like, oh, my God, they missed the earnings again, 20%. The bulls would be like – Robo taxis are now in 15 cities. But by the way, having run hedge funds, I have to say, if I, if I was an analyst and I had pitched Tesla as a short, okay, and I and I had said to my boss, I am super confident that the earnings are going straight down, and that four years from now, the um, the 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 earnings per share will be. 60% lower than it was in yep. 2022. Let's short the stock. And it all happened exactly as I, I said, and the stock is flat. I'm, I'm going insane. Well, that's why, but that's why I could tell you, like, as someone that lives in like the institutional world, mm-hmm. but also on the retail world in terms of private client, well, speak so much to retail, you know, Webbush and others. What I think this market, what's been so frustrating for many is like from the Palantirs to the NVIDIAs to the Teslas to many other names where a lot of times investors have been, if they've done their work on the negative side, they've actually been right in terms of sometimes their thesis in Mm -hmm. terms of numbers. But what they've missed is... What's coming. What's coming. And, And I think that... It's been a very, look, you know, you've obviously lived it, you know, for decades. I think that's been the most difficult thing for stock picking. If you're very valuation centric, it's been a very, very, look, it's been a very brutal, you know, brutal years for many of those investors. That was Dan Ives delivering one of the most comprehensive. 就是很多人认为呢，谷歌旗下的 Waymo 采用的是激光雷达加多种传感器
安全带加背带式的双重保险的方案，技术上好像更可靠，已经开始在一些大城市运营。而特斯拉呢，坚守的纯视觉技术似乎还无法应对复杂的这个城市状况。这难道不是特斯拉的致命弱点吗？就是你没有这么多的传感器，难道不是你的致命弱点吗？毕竟出行市场最大的金矿就在大城市里面。丹·埃弗斯的回答非常直接，他承认 v m o 的技术非常酷、非常好，但他紧接着指出了一个核心的问题，那就是成本。他透露，一辆 v m o 自动驾驶的汽车成本高达二十到二十三万美元，这个价格决定了它根本就无法大规模的普及。用单你去体验一下 v m o 感觉很酷，可以拍张照发张朋友圈，但也就仅此而已。你不是把它作为一个日常的出行的工具。相比之下，特斯拉的目标就是制造人人都能负担得起的这个车，比如说三万美元的一个车型。当 v m o 还只是为少数几个城市小心翼翼的在部署它昂贵的车队的时候，特斯拉已经能让数百万的具备自动驾驶的汽车跑在路上。更便宜的视觉方案要如何才能够战胜昂贵和豪华的传感器方案呢？我们这个昂贵和豪华，豪华两个字要打上双引号，它只是字面意义上的豪华。但艾弗斯给出的两个词啊，就是数据和 AI。他强调，特斯拉的模式是一个数据驱动的模式。目前，全球已经有超过一千万辆特斯拉的汽车在路上行驶，它们就像一个个移动的数据收集器，每时每刻呢，都在为特斯拉的 AI 算法提供海量的真实世界的驾驶数据。这不仅是摄像头技术啊。而是摄像头加 AI 软件，摄像头加人工智能。特斯拉正在用海量的数据去训练一个越来越聪明的大脑，这就像 AI 领域的暴力美学，直接数据量足够大，大力出奇迹。你的算法，你的数据量足够大，你的算法足够先进的时候，你可以用更低的成本、更低成本的硬件，实现甚至超越那些用昂贵硬件堆砌起来的那个效果。特斯拉将在大约两年内。在真正 L 4级别的全自动驾驶上取得关键性的联邦批准，这就是直接。如果说技术的路线的胜利只是第一步，那么接下来，但艾弗斯啊，对 Uber 和 l i f t 来说，等于是降维的打击。他描绘了这样一个场景：你想象一下，你有一辆特斯拉，你早上开着它去上班，把车停在公司之后，你只需要在手机上按一个键，你的特斯拉就加入了这个无人出租车 Robot Taxi 的车车队，他自己就帮你去赚钱了。等到晚上你六六点下班的时候，他赚完钱又回到了你的公司的车库来接你。这一天他已经为你赚了五百美元，你就躺赚。这意味着是什么？这意味着运力，特斯拉的运力将是海量的，会有非常多的特斯拉车主把他们的 Model Y、Model 3 Cyber Truck 加入到 r o b o t a x i 的车队。数百万的特斯拉车主将可以成为运力的提供者。第二，成本将急剧的下降。因为车辆的成本由车主、啊、个人承担，省去了平台养车和司机的巨额的开销，你已经交了保险了，不用特斯拉出租车公司再再给你交保险。第三，这将彻底改变游戏规则，特斯拉不再是和 Uber 抢司机，而是直接创造了一个由车主构成的自动化的成本极低的出行网络。特斯拉将从一家汽车制造商呢，转型成为一个巨大的交通网络平台。这对严重依赖司机和高抽成的这个 Uber 来说，无疑会是生存危机。其实这个我们都聊到过非常多次。Uber， 你别看它股价一直好像是在上涨，但它的上涨的幅度不大。它这个利润这么好，为什么上只上涨了这么多，上涨的非常少？其实我相信是有非常多投资了非常多年 Uber 的，已经开始慢慢的卖出了。当然，它不会一天崩盘。我们慢慢的再看，特斯拉是一个一个凿开这个城市。访谈中还提到了一个让很多投资者困惑的现象：特斯拉从二零二二年盈利见顶之后，到现在盈利已经暴跌了百分之六十，就是比二零二二年、比三年前它的盈利还要低百分之六十，但股价却基本和三年前持平，甚至比三年前还要高。如果一个做空者精准预测了这一切，他可能会疯掉。但艾弗斯解释说，这恰恰证明了。市场在想什么？投资者看的早已不是特斯拉能卖多少车，每年能有多少利润。他们之所以愿意给出如此高的估值，是因为他们在为特斯拉的未来定价。这个未来就包括 r o b o t a x i 一个潜在的万亿级的市场。第二是人形机器人，正如英伟达 CEO 黄仁勋所说，这是一个实体 AI 的未来，将颠覆制造业和体力劳动。第三呢是 AI 和能源。
。这是一家以 AI 和机器人技术为核心的科技公司，而不仅仅是一家汽车公司。跟我的观点很多东西都是相近的，路线非常的清晰。通过这个低成本的纯视觉路线，可复制的用 AI 软件的方式解决这个自动驾驶的问题。你一辆车搞定了自动驾驶，你几百万辆车都搞定了自动驾驶，你不需要额外的去给每一个车配备高精地图和激光雷达，啊，你可以无限的复制这个功能，比你单个突破每一台车去提升要强非常多，要强几万倍，要强几亿倍。这就是为什么特斯拉估值能够上万亿、上两万亿，而威莫我认为它很快就会一文不值，甚至乌博呢？它的估值也逐渐会被特斯拉的这个 Road Taxi 所蚕食，它现在有两千多亿美元的估值，我认为它非常危险。这解释了为什么特斯拉仍然是资本市场上最受瞩目也最具争议性的公司。感谢您的收看，我们下期再见之前一定要点赞、订阅我的频道、打开小铃铛，这是对我最好的支持。